Last video, we looked at the browser element command and how we can consolidate element information into a single object for reuse in our test file. Now let's formalize our approach to take full advantage of page objects. Before jumping into the code, let's define what page objects are. In testing, the page object pattern refers to code that abstracts out specific details from our tests. These details can be element selectors of individual commands to run. Take a login page, for example. The test normally would include information as the login input and button selectors, along with the set value and click commands. Anyone unfamiliar with the specific syntax inside the page wouldn't be able to easily modify the test. Using page objects, we can represent these selectors and commands in more meaningful ways. We'll store our selectors as email and password properties. Instead of multiple commands to log in, we'll create a login command that encapsulates all the work needed. Now our test is much clearer to understand for those unfamiliar with the page and is more robust to changes to the website itself. Before moving on, I do want to disclaim that page objects don't necessarily need to represent an entire page. In many cases, they may represent a common component used across many pages. A site nav menu is a good example of this. While I'd prefer the name component object, the term page object is widely used and accepted to represent this idea, so I'll stick with it. As I mentioned before, in the last video we looked at using the browser element command inside our cart test. We'll continue down this path by moving the definition outside of the test file itself. We'll also convert our simple JavaScript object to a more useful class. To start, we'll cut the current cart object out of the test file. Then we'll create a new file and save it as cart page.js. Naming it with the page suffix helps organize our files between actual tests and our page objects used inside those tests. Since we're working on two related files, it's helpful to view them side by side. I'll do this using Sublime Text layout functionality. Inside our new file, we'll paste our cart object in. Since we're not planning on reusing the selectors inside the file itself, we can move them out of variables and reference them directly inside our browser element command. We'll clean up our unneeded variables by deleting them. The next step we'll take can be confusing for those unfamiliar with ES6. ES6 is a version of JavaScript that brought many new features. Important to us, it introduced the concept of classes. Classes are a way to write associated code in a much simpler and clearer syntax. Currently, we're using a JavaScript object to store all of our elements together. By using the class keyword, we can achieve a similar effect, but add many additional benefits that classes provide. To start our conversion, we'll replace var with class, then remove the equal sign. The only other change we need to make is to remove the trailing commas from our getters. Classes have been supported in Node since version 4. If you've recently started with Node, you should be good to go. You can double check what version you're on from the command line by running node-v. There is an alternate way to define classes that is supported by older versions of Node if this affects you. Simply check out the page objects page on the WebDriver.io website for more information. With our class created, the last step for our file is to export it. Exports are a way for Node.js to pull data and functionality out of a file for other files to use. To use an export, just save whatever code you want to make available to the module exports property. In our case, we're going to send a new cart object as our export. We need to make one simple update to our test file to use our page object inside of it. Using node's require system, we'll create a cart variable, then require our page object file. This tells node to load that file and store whatever was exported to our cart variable. Everything else works just like before. Because we introduced a new file naming pattern, we need to make sure that WebDriver.io doesn't treat our page objects as actual tests. Jumping into the WDIO conf.js file, we can add a filter to our exclude property, telling WebDriver.io to ignore any files with a page.js extension. This means that when WebDriver.io is looking for tests to run, it will pass over any files in our test folder with page.js at the end of the file name. Let's run our tests to confirm all of our changes worked. 
It may seem like a lot of work just to have the same effect, but page objects really do improve the maintainability, readability, and functionality of your test suite. In the next video, we'll look at defining custom functions inside our page objects to improve further upon this pattern.